dark in here. It's really dark in here. Ah, today is so exciting. We finally get to start setting up some wiring and some lights and stuff like that. I don't know if we'll get the lights turned on completely, but uh, we've got some, some pucks that we're gonna put up to the ceiling. We've got wires that we're gonna run through the walls and stuff. And uh, I'm super excited about this. Let's just get to work. We've been living in the darkness. One, two, three. All right, so we got a couple different kinds. Uh, we've got one that's a 3000K, and uh, these are all dimmable, so we've got dimmer switches and stuff for it. Oh, I'll open the other kind. Yeah, what do you got for the other kind? What was those ones called? These ones dim to warm. So the gal said these are more for romantic settings Ooh. because when they go warm, they go warm. So we just got four of these that we're gonna put in the bedroom. But in the kitchen and main living room space, we're gonna do a lot of arts and crafts. We're gonna oh, yeah. do a lot of filming for a cooking show and uh, crafts and stuff that we do. So. Um, we need nice bright lights. And then when they dim, they can just kind of dim normal. So these are not 12 volts. Uh, we were looking at the 12 volt ones and we weren't really happy with the dimmable options for 12 volt. And maybe we just didn't look hard enough, but we've been looking for weeks and didn't see any that we really, really liked. So we went with the 120 volt option. They're only nine watts on, I think the, the most setting, uh, like the highest setting. So we're not gonna have these on constantly, so I don't really think that they're actually gonna use that much energy, but we'll see. We'll, we'll test it and everything. Uh, this, this box is pretty solid. It feels like aluminum, and it's got the connectors in there for the white and black, and then also for the ground. Looks nice. Our big argument for it was that we really don't think we're gonna use the lights a lot. We have a ton, a ton, a ton of natural light in here. So for most of the day, if we're actually hanging out inside, we probably have all natural light. Um, and then just in the evenings, we'll probably use the lights if we're like crafting and creating and stuff. Um, it'll be nice to have lights for that. So these are super thin. I mean, look at that. That's like, half an inch or something like that. So it'll fit nice in the ceiling. Something I liked about these also is that they're good for wet environments and then also can be put directly against insulation. So they're completely sealed and they've got these nice little spring -a to hold them up into the ceiling. So, um, so far they feel pretty solid. They look nice. I don't know, we'll see. Cool. Oh, they got a hole cutting template right on the box. All right, so the first thing we're doing is taking them out one by one, and uh, we're punching out the knockouts, and then um, putting in these little cable connectors here. This keeps the 12-2 wire from sliding in and out, uh, the electric wire, so that it stays nice and snug. Snug as a bug. Here's what the little box that goes up into the ceiling, what it looks like. Pretty sturdy. It just kind of pops open. These are good in wet or dry environments. And there's what the inside looks like. It's got these cool little quick connects right here, which is nice, because then you could just put your uh, your bare copper wire into there and it'll snap in real easily. And then on both sides, there's a uh, knockout with a little slot in it. You get a flathead screwdriver like that and wiggle it around and there it goes it pops and then you can take it off of there and discard that and the next thing we're doing is we're grabbing the cable connector right here and we take this ring off the back here and then we're connecting it here so something to keep in mind is when this is up in the ceiling, you wanna be able to access this screw so the wire can go in. So we're having it kind of go, kind of at a little down angle a little bit. And then... Down angle towards the floor. Now we're gonna do something kind of silly, but it's for a good reason. We're gonna tape the boxes <laughs> to the ceiling because if we screw 
these holes into the ceiling like it's meant to, we're just drilling right through our roof. Yeah. We don't want to do that. So and our furring it. strips aren't long enough to mount them sideways so that the mounting holes will work. It's so. Like it's not like deep enough from the ceiling. Yeah. No, that's not gonna work. That would work. That's gonna work, but we need to. Yeah. That's it. Bye bye. Okay, ready to stick. So this is the first one? First one. Like there? Yeah. All right, one, two, three. It's there forever now. Uh, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> it seems so hilarious to use tape. Oh, that's freaking strong. So that tape supposedly, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because then we could slide that through there, connect it, and then that way we could still access the screws here to tighten yeah. down the Romex. That makes sense. Perfect. And then this can go right about there. Don't Let's... you think it's kind of funny? Like, it seems like so half-assed. <laughs> <laughs> and then we taped it onto the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny about that also is that um, in places that already have this con construction done in ceilings, you can just take that box and just throw it up inside the area. You don't right. even need to attach it. That's at least what the instruction said. So We're a moving vehicle though, so yeah. it seems like you wouldn't want to hear that box. Just all the boxes sliding around <laughs> every corner you take. Yeah. Nuh uh. Not up, not up in here. Yeah. You imagine what that would sound like? <laughs> <laughs> and then you hit a bump, and then they all go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's put some more tape on these puppies. All right. Here we go. Tape for Rooney. There you go. So, do you want to position it similarly? Yeah, they did the same. So. And just make sure that the other one has lots of space. What do you think about like right yeah, there? Yeah, closer there. to the rib. Yeah, closer to the rib because that's plenty of room to still add the wires, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. It's on forever now. All right. Well, that was pretty uneventful. It's up there now. It's there forever. <laughs> this is like the lamest thing we've ever done. I'm not sure how interesting this video is going to be. <laughs> started uh, opening up the box and pushing on the inside of the box just because the lid was flexing and I feel like I'm getting a tighter uh, connection now. With the tape. With the tape. With the tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 pounds, 15 pounds it's rated to. Look at that tape application. <laughs> do you see, do you see that technique everyone? Yeah. This is very technical. Look at that technique. Please make sure right there. that if you try this at home, you're very safe. And then there's the backing. Tell us about the backing. It's important that you grow your fingernails a bit longer for this technique to really work. And then you can, ooh. Nice. With those there, you can see the spot over here for B and over there. So we've got it situated directly over the counter workspace so that we can have a nice experience cooking, huh? So that's what it looks like when she's cooking in halogen lights. Soon to be a nice even flood. box back panel to junction box is about two feet oh you know it could go like right beside it right beside it yeah but I, I drew <laughs> like a not a rough sketch but a sketch of what we were gonna do for our electrical plan with Brian's help obviously and then uh, last night Brian took the plan to a whole new level and did this which is 
super exciting. Um, we don't necessarily know what we're doing, so take that for what it's worth. Yeah, so this is definitely not how to, this is just how we did it. <laughs> and uh, consult a local electrician because building codes everywhere are different. And guess what? We're actually gonna be consulting with an electrician also to go over our work and make sure that what we're doing is a-okay because I cannot tell you how many house fires I've been to where they burn the whole place down all because of faulty wiring. So You don't wanna burn your schoolie down. Don't after burn your schoolie. You put all that love and effort into Extra it. Extra love, yeah. extra effort. Yeah. yeah. So if you want this plan, um, we put a lot of work into it. We're gonna put it in Get Your Schoolie On and we're gonna put the editable version in so that you can actually download it yep. and move it all around and make it work for your layout. Yeah, and we'll put the version in after we've seen the electrician. Yeah, so it'll be Good. kind of blessed by an electrician, but always, always consult with a professional. Lead the way. All right, so right about here will be the panel, and we'll have everything coming out of that. The panel should arrive today, but we just don't have it yet, so that's why it's not there. Doesn't mean we can't measure with our measuring tape, though. Measuring in the dungeon. Okay, so if that junction box, so if this is here, and we do a junction box like right here or something, yep. Then everything else, like I think the bottom of the panel, if we have it low, that way we've got room on the top to go in and out. Um, so the junction box is like in here somewhere. Yeah. So, and then that's the first plug. So that's uh, do 2.5 feet. Uh, junction to two is 2.5. Yep. All right, so we got a lot of measuring that we have to be doing. We're measuring between all the outlets. We're measuring between all the switches. And we haven't bought the receptacles yet because we needed to know how many we're gonna have. So we had to calculate for the plug outlets. So like the little three prongs, right? And then we also needed to calculate for the switches. So we've got two-way switches, three-way switches, dimmer switches, all sorts of different switches. And so, Measuring between everything, like on paper, it's like, oh, it's just a straight run. Well, you gotta go around framing and all sorts of stuff. So that's what we're kind of doing here with this floppy tape measure, so that we can kind of get a rough estimate of how much uh, Romex cable that we need to get, because they sell it by the meter at the local electrical supply shop. Yeah, so we're gonna get a rough amount. We wanted to measure it all out so that we wouldn't be wasteful, which is nice for saving some coin and also just for the environment. Right, right there, cool. Pass this through to me. And then you man that part. Yeah, I guess if it's lower on the wall. I, I think lower on the wall would be cool. Look at it. Yeah, like down. Nine feet. Nine feet, perfect. And then four is down there, so we'll make a turn here. Um, go 22 feet. Four. And then five, do we want it up here or do we want to keep it low? Maybe put it up uh, so the driver can use it too without having to like reach down to an awkward spot. Or oh. Or in between, like, because that's going to be between the couch arms and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so maybe up higher right would yeah. be more convenient. I like it. Two, 12, three, 412.5 feet. Whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. So we got a little side project that we need to do. We just got back from getting all of our wire and some uh, electrical boxes and stuff. And so we've got this massive spool here of 12-2. And when you're unwinding wire, if you just go and unwind it, it'll end up being all curly and totally out of order. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it on its side and then we're gonna unspool it. So we're gonna make a device with this black iron pipe 
with two floor flanges. We're gonna throw it through the middle, have it on uh, up off the ground just a little bit on a little A-frame, and then we'll be able to unspool it nice and smooth. Let's check it out. Oh, but first, eye pro! Ear pro, glove pro! Yeah, let's get to work. And while Brian's doing that, I'm scavenging for two by fours and two by twos. Some of these are pretty gnarly um, because it's all reclaimed wood, but that's okay. They literally just need to hold the boxes and uh, what are the boxes called? What's electric that? boxes. Yep. They need to hold the electric boxes so that we're not um, grounding out to the frame of the bus, I believe. We want all three pieces to be the same size. happy with this. What do you think? Yeah. Look at that. Look at it. I wish it came wired. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-wired. <laughs> All right. Now we got to figure out how to hook this up without drilling holes in the side of the bus. Yeah. That should be interesting. Maybe make a bench for it, like a park bench. Oh, this lighting is terrible. We need some real lights in here. What do you think? Maybe we need to install some. We're working on that. Oh, that's all about this. <laughs> what you see right here, it's not a permanent solution. Temporary, guys. Temporary. Yeah, that's probably, that'll be long enough. When temporaries forever. Te temporariesforever.com. So let's see, this will probably be something like that. What do you think? Perfect. So the idea is that we have room behind the panel to insulate. That's why we've got it pulled out a little bit. It also gives us a lot more room up top for um, running cables. Then we just punch these out um, and we don't have to go through our fraying strips. All right, that's temporary, temporary goodness. Perfect. <laughs> it's beautiful. I get talked into this going in the closet. <sighs> we didn't really plan for any other spot is the thing. If you were to ask us the problems that we have, we don't have very many. Not many. Um, the only major, not major problem, the, the challenge that we have is windows. We have a lot of windows, that? not much wall space. So we're having a vertical challenge with like storage and then finding a place for this breaker box. So the breaker box is going to go behind the hanging clothes. This is where the hanging clothes are going to go. And then this will be all closed in. So we have to look at that ugly thing. Okay, so we're about to cut our first wire right over here. But before we do that, we wanna to put together our first gang box. So these are basically electrical boxes that you can mount your switches and electrical outlets to. And yep. uh, this is considered one gang. Mm -hmm. These particular ones, they're metal, they come in plastic also, um, but we couldn't get the plastic ones like you normally would there in the US. So we're gonna just make sure that these aren't grounded out to metal, which we heard it can be a problem. And put this here. Having never done this before, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
gang. Ah, ah, ah. Temporary. There we go. So this is gonna be one of the other temporary placed one because we're gonna have an actual like uh, kind of a decorative low wall that prevents people from stepping off onto a lower step, which will cover all this area here. So um, we're gonna position this box just here with enough slack that we're able to pull it out and actually get it to be right here essentially. So we're going to kind of position it right here. <laughs> But we don't want to keep bumping into it every time we come in the bus. So oh, we're yeah. going to place it a little back. So we'll place it here. What do you think? Just place it here. That way we have space for the plug or whatever. Because yep. the plug one might be down in here maybe. Yep. If the armrest is here, having yep. the plug here might be a nice idea. A nice feature for yep. a plug. Nice fe future feature. Come up here through there and then the lights. to A. We're gonna give that a whirl. Everything you ever wanted to trip over. Yeah! These right here, guys. If you're cutting 12-2 or 12-3 or anything that's actually thick, these are called cable cutters. They're for cutting cables versus wire cutters, which cut wires. And uh, earlier we tried to cut this with just wire cutters. It's possible, you could do it. But these here, look how simple this is. Right there. Whoa. See how much simpler that is? Didn't even really work very hard at it. Looks nice. Thanks, Dad. Did you just say you're getting ready for a switch? Yeah, yeah, let's get ready for the first switch. What do you think? All right, so we're uh, getting set up for a three-way switch setup. So what that means is that there's two actual on and off switches, but one of them we want to be a dimmer. In this position here, we're gonna have it actually facing the door, which is why we have this extra stuff here because we haven't built the wall yet. But we're gonna have this box facing the door, so when we enter the bus, we could turn on the left switch right here, or the right switch right here, or both of them. And what that's gonna do is this first switch is gonna turn on this first section of lights. The second switch is gonna turn on the kitchen section. So the first section is the living room and driver compartment area. Second switch is kitchen. And now these are just toggle on and off switches, and you'll see those here in a second. The other switch that is gonna be the second switch for both of these sections, we're gonna have two dimmers. One is for a dimmer for the couch area, the living room area, and the other is the dimmer for the kitchen area. Now, you may be asking, hey, why aren't you running 12 volt wiring? You know, we're, we're using regular house wires here because we're using 110 volt for these because honestly, they're more reliable the, uh, and they don't flicker like 12 volt might do to you. So we don't wanna experience that. And I know that there's a lot of different drivers and stuff for 12 volt light LEDs and for dimmers and stuff, but I haven't really seen any really good reviews. So we might as well just go with something that has good reviews. And we're gonna have an inverter anyway and plenty of uh, battery bank storage. So they don't use that much energy, guys. Moment of truth.
<laughs> they don't even flicker. No, they don't. That's no, they low. Don't. That's high. There's off. All right, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn these on. Gosh. We're not orange anymore. We may have to set up this this panel sooner than later. I cannot believe this right now. We wired a three-way switch together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Mm. Good job. <laughs> this is great. Ah, this is so cool. This is so cool. Okay, we've got a few more sections to wire. But first, we're gonna go take a nap or something. Yes! really good. Let me go test this other switch over here. Yes. And off. Yes. Nice. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's so nice. Test the dim over here. So let's say we had it dimmed down a little bit because we were like, oh, we're going for groceries and then it came out late and we had it dimmed down a little bit. Let's say it was all the way low. Oh. Then we leave for groceries. Like, oh, let's turn the light off. Oh, okay. And then we come back from groceries and it's like, oh, let's turn the light on when we open the door. Oh, mm. It stays nice and dim. Mm. Nice. Beautiful. So whatever level you leave it on last. Love it. Yeah. Nice. No sparks. No fire. Doesn't smell like anything's burning yet. And uh, all of this feels nice and cool. Nice. These are actually cool. They they don't even they don't even feel like they're giving off heat. Cool. Cool. Rock and roll. B is in the books. Woo! So we're getting the third switch set up on this three-way switch. Three gang box. CS1. CS1. C stands for the section of this. S stands for switch. And one is the first switch in this series. That's right, folks. First switch, first switch, first switch. <laughs> and section C is the hallway lights. Yep. This is not much of a chatty catty video. Which is kind of nice, um, but this is like super high concentration and focus, especially for that guy. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Um, I'm just running around doing all the little fun stuff, uh, but he's doing so good. What's cool is I'm finally learning more about how this electricity stuff works. So I know that it's a shocking experience whenever you touch it when you're not supposed to. It's electrifying. <laughs> oh, that didn't come out right, did it? Every so often, we are needing to add some <laughs> some of these vertical P 
pieces of wood so that we can yeah. put our metal box on there and then the box doesn't ground out to the bus. Um, so yeah, we're just putting in a few pieces of wood and it's going really good. It'll be nice once we have a little bit of light in here <laughs> and we can emerge from the dungeon. <gasps> Got it secure in the box, haven't wired it yet, um, but we are going to go to C2, which is the last one on this run here. Our long hallway. <laughs> down, down our long hallway, longa. So let's see, so this will need a little bend right there, so we'll probably tack that one up there with a staple, tack it there, and then it'll make that gentle, nice, look at that curve. That is a nice, gentle curve. Nice gentle curve. So curvy. Yeah, and then it'll go to here. <laughs> then it'll make another nice, gentle curve. That's right, it's gonna be nice, it's gonna be gentle, and it's gonna come right up here to this box. So you've been cutting it just kind of so it extends past the box and then you find you've had the right amount of wire. Um, what I've been doing is uh, extending it to the edge of the box. So if it's coming in here, when I cut it to this length here after having enough for the gentle bends and everything, um, then it seems to be just enough for what needs to happen in there without being too long. It's trick, Garcia. Yeah, it's, well after I'm done freaking Let's see, four, eight, nine. Here's the tenth one. <laughs> yeah, tenth one. There we go. So you're setting up to do an electrical test? Oh yeah. Ah, here we go. <laughs> and the lights turned on. Woo! So that's the on off switch. And then if we go into the kitchen area, we have this one wired in the hall for this last switch. Go ahead and hit it. to turn off. Oh. So now if we turn this on in the kitchen area, and then dim it. we can dim it, we can raise it. Oh, that's so nice. We can turn it off, we can turn it on. It's like its own room. Yeah. So that looks like it is a success right there, folks. Woo! There we go. So the reason why we set these switches up the way that we have is because if we're in the kitchen and we want to turn the hall lights on, we can do that from the kitchen area. Or if we go to bed and we're all like, oh, we forgot to turn the hall lights off, we've got a switch in the bedroom that we can just hit it to turn it off. That's what a three-way switch does for you. Even though it says three-way, there's two switches and either switch can turn it on, either switch can turn it off, and then in this case, we've got one of the switches that has a dimmer. Yay! Cool. Nice. What a beauty. Cool. Every new weird scenario, a new devil, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every level, another devil. Another devil. Let's see, so that's three and three, three and three, three and seven eighths. So, do you like that height? Yeah. So if we... Craig jig this two by four right there. Then we can cut a hole here and we can put that light switch right there. Perfect. Good. It's nice not blowing through the other side. Nice, solid. I think that's going to be covered by the faceplate. area right here for the vanity light but we're not going to cut it so that we can test this light and the light brand's working on. 
So you notice that this light is in fact going to be in the shower. Yeah. We're going to have a, um, a skylight that we're going to put in up here. So you're going to want to wait for that because it's going to be a domer style. Um, but these, uh, these lights are wet rated, so you, we can have them in the shower. So that was another reason why we went with this particular light. Oh yeah, and we want to give a huge shout out to all the awesome new people we've had that just joined Get Your Schoolie On, our e-course. Yeah, welcome to Get Your Schoolie On. Uh, we look forward to answering any questions that you may have and getting to know you. So thanks. Works. We go to tour it. Sure. So there's the switch there. That's on the where right. the toilet's gonna go. And the switch is on the right. Right there. Sticking out of the wall right now because we're gonna have our electrician look over it and bless it. Ooh, mood lighting in the shower. Oh. Oh. I see it all. Wow, I haven't seen this in the daylight. Whoa. Look at that. I want to see what it looks like dimmed also. Give us a moody shower. Oh my gosh, that is wonderful. Really? Holy smokes. I want to be in it. So you're in the moody shower right now? Oh damn, first shower scene. Oh damn, girl. Wow. You got so much room in there. I have so much room in here. <gasps> Oh, I can't wait to get back to this project. <laughs> Soon. So many things to do, but everything is coming together. It is crazy how every project seems to take forever, like forever, ever. And after you finish a project, you're like, yeah, we got a little, another little chunk done and every little chunk counts. We're finally at the chunks where like, there's a foreseeable end, kind of. <laughs> We're just like knocking the, knocking the things off the checklist, which is really nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Each other, the blacks next to each other, and the reds. Yeah. There you go. Some good coaching! I wired the light! <laughs> <gasps> Bedroom romance! Oh yeah! Wow, that's so nice! I know, How look romantic. at that! This is so great! It's so easy on the eyes because it takes a lot of the blue out of it because it goes down to 2000 Kelvin. It's beautiful. Yeah, I think this calls for a nap. <gasps> Bye! That's a wrap.